Welcome to the R video tutorial on the central limit theorem in R. So I'm going to put in here in R and it's via simulation. And so often you hear about the central limit theorem when you take a statistics class and it's really not explained very well because you don't get a chance to interact with it. And what we want to do is create a simulation where we randomly sample from distributions and we can actually interact with this idea of the central limit theorem. So the central limit theorem is about the sample mean, not about the data. It's about the behavior of the sample mean when we change the sample size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start creating a simulation that will allow us to play with the central limit theorem. And it's actually pretty easy if you just are a little bit patient, not a lot of code, but it does require the for loop, which is required. Uh, was in the previous video. So if you haven't watched it yet, you might want to jump back there and watch it so you're familiar with what a for loop is. So I'm going to do the number of samples. This is going to be the sample size uh, that I'm going to have here. And I'm going to say, let's just pretend it's one right now. We're going to do a sample size of one. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have the number of simulations. And this just allows us to see how often uh, this or how frequent this behavior exhibits on this data. So if we do this experiment a thousand times, that's what n sim is, the number of times we're going to do the experiment. So I need a container. So that's always, whenever you're going to do a for loop, create a container, because if you don't, you'll regret it. Okay, and here our container is just going to be, I'm going to call it x mean and this is going to be repeated zero and we're going to do n sim times uh, that way we can only change the numbers at the top and the rest of it will run and we'll be able to determine things on our own all right so the next thing is we're going to do four i in one to n sim now notice i didn't actually put a thousand here because i don't need to r is smart enough to know that n sim is a thousand and we'll create this vector for us that will go from one to a thousand and it will iterate through it okay so what do i need to do i need to get a data set so i'm going to say x1 is equal to and we'll just start simple r norm which is normally distributed uh let's pretend we're going to pull well how many we're we going to pull well we're going to pull n samples from it so this is our sample size and let's give it a mean of let's say five and a standard deviation of one so this is our population that we're drawing from so draw from population the next thing i need to do is just store this off x mean the ith one is equal to the mean of the vector x1 and this will store this off for us so that we can see a picture of it when we get down here so that's the next thing we're going to do is create a picture here so i'm going to do a histogram of x mean and let's just make sure that we're okay here and we're going to make the x limits fixed so that they don't change so we can see any behavior that may happen so this is going to go between five and five or probably somewhere around zero and ten let's uh would be my guess and we can look at this we can add a little bit of color just to make it nice i'm going to do light blue again because that's what i feel like today and now let's run it so the first thing we're going to do is assign these two values okay so we're going to assign these two values we're going to hit run notice one shows up here one thousand shows up here 1,000 is how many times I'm going to do this experiment of drawing from a normal population with a mean of 5 and a standard deviation of 1. And n samp is how many I'm going to draw at a time. So if I do this, I just highlight this and I'm going to run it. And it won't take very long to run. Boom, it's done. So this is the actual histogram of the mean that we have here. So you can see that it's centered at five, it's symmetric, and this is actually a normal distribution because we did a sample size of one. So essentially all we did was pull random draws from a normal distribution. We didn't really change the mean at all. 
okay? All we, or, or we didn't change the distribution, we didn't do anything. We just pulled data because it's a sample size of one. Once so we can do a sample size of two, we'll actually start calculating means, which we didn't do on these. So let's change the sample size to two and see what happens. And we can zoom in and notice this is a little bit different than our last one, but it's still centered at five and it's still symmetric. Uh, no real unusual features here and looks a little narrower than our previous one. So maybe we crank this up to five and let's see what five looks like. And that's the beauty of creating a simulation like this. We only have to change the numbers at the top. Everything else runs and then we can just look at our pictures. Okay, so this one looks a lot different than our last one. Notice it's mostly between four and six. Uh, it's still centered around five and it still is symmetric. Um, so notice this thing's getting narrower and, and that's important to pay attention to is, is their spread is shrinking. So what happens if I had a sample size of 10? Well, if I run this, I can see what happens. Well, this now is even tighter than it was before. Uh, and it's still symmetric and it's still centered around five, but it's shrinking in even more. And what it's telling me, this histogram is telling me, is how likely it would be to see a value or a mean of this if our underlying distribution or underlying population statement is true. And notice it would be extremely unlikely to see a two or an eight for a sample mean if we pulled from this population. And we're pulling a sample size of 10. Okay, so let's uh, crank this up just a little bit more. What happens if we go to 20? So if I change it to 20, I'm keeping my population the same. The population's a normal distribution with a standard deviation of one. And we run through this and we notice that now it's even narrower and more compact than it was before. And this is interesting because this is what the central limit actually says is that uh, our mean is going to stay the same for the sample mean of the, our uh, sample means mean will be the same as the population mean. But the variance is going to change. The variance is the spread and it's going to shrink as the sample size increases. Uh, the other thing that's going to happen here is the distribution is going to become approximately normal. However, in this case, we started off normal and you can show mathematically that this is actually a normal distribution. Okay, so this is our first attempt at this, and in the next couple of videos, what we're going to do is we're going to play around with some of these assumptions and see what happens. So this is the first one where we're in the normal case. Uh, when we go to the next one, we'll probably jump to maybe the gamma case, because we're familiar with the gamma distribution, and we'll see how that changes or not changes our picture and what kinds of statements we can make. All right, so let's jump to the next video.